section I2, center of mass of or for two masses. In physics, we always like to look at the simplest case to get insight as to what's going on. And what we're going to do here is look at a basketball and a pool ball. Now here, this is the reference. It's a one-dimensional problem, so we're only interested in the x. And the first mass is x1 away from the reference. This is the reference, x equals zero, this line here. So this is gonna be here, the x, x1. And then if you go way out here to where the pool ball is, that's x2. And then we're going to apply the formula. So let's go ahead and do that here where we have an x1 and we have here an x2 like this and this is x equal to zero so this is mass one and this is mass two so the formula says the center of mass is take the first one times its mass times its distance from the reference plus the second one like this, and then divide by the sum. So this formula, we can see what it would be if, let's do a case here, case one, if the masses are the same. Okay, if that's the case, then the center of mass becomes m, We'll just say they're the same, little m. Then we'll have here m x1 plus m x2 over m plus m. Now you can see the m's are gonna cancel out and what you're gonna wind up with here is x1 plus x2 over two. So that's saying that the center of mass is going to be the average x. So if you come out to here and come out to there, see the average be in the middle of those two. So that would be the, mid, the, middle, the middle of those two. That would be the x center of mass, say like that. Now, roughly a basketball is four times the mass of a billiard ball. Okay, so if we use if we use that, in other words, we can take this to be actually it's very close to like 0.64 kilograms as an example of a basketball mass. And then for this one we'll take 0 0.16, 0 0.16 kilograms like that. So if we do that, then the center of mass, in fact, it's probably easier just to consider this one to be, let this be little m, then the m1 is for m. So when we do that in the formula, we'll have 4m times x1 plus m times x2 over 4m plus m. Once again, all the m's are gonna cancel out, all these are gonna divide out, and we're gonna have here four over, that's a five, so we'll have four fifths of m, oh, excuse me, of x1, four fifths of x1, and that'll be plus 
x2 over 5. So that's what we'll get. One, one, one fifth of x2. So four fifths and then one fifth. Just so where is that point relative to that basketball? Well, the center of mass, if I take it, take the center of mass where now we don't know where it is, we're gonna subtract x1. See how far it is from the basketball center. Then that's gonna be four fifths of x1 plus one fifth of x2 minus x1. So here, when we work this out, we're gonna get, with these two, we're gonna get a minus one fifth, four fifths minus five fifths, or a one there, minus one fifth, and then plus one fifth x2. So this is one fifth of x2 minus x1 by just factoring out the one fifth. So that means it's gonna to be to the right of the basketball at one fifth the distance between the two because if you take x2 and subtract x1, you get this distance. And one fifth of this distance, more like over, over here someplace, is going to be where it is. Now we can simplify things by picking the center of the basketball to be at the reference. So that makes things very, very simple when we do that. Now watch why that's the case. If we put the basketball at the origin here, then it's x1 is going to be zero, like that's where it is. And that's going to make the equation pretty easy to do. So this is x2. And here, since x1 is zero, then your first term isn't even there. So then you get for the center of mass, you get zero plus m2 x2 over m1 plus m2 and since this one is an m and this one is a 4m you will get 1 over 5 see so you'll get 1 fifth x2 and like that's real fast so it's it's 1 fifth of this distance is where the center of mass is. And depending on where you put that ball, the center of mass could be inside the basketball. So we're ready to do another one. How about, how about the earth and the moon? So if we do the earth and the moon, we have the earth and we have the moon. This distance here is 384,400 kilometers. And the mass of the Earth, so this is Earth, and this is Moon. This is, we'll go ahead and call that the big M, and we'll call the Moon the little M. The big M is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the mass of the moon, 7.348 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. Now we'll pick the Earth to be centered on the origin, so that makes the formula easier. So we have m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over the sum. The x1 is zero, so we'll have the big M for m1 times zero plus the mass of the moon, the little m, 
times x2 over the sum. And the x2 is simply the distance to the moon. So this is going to be, let's call that d. This is d. So our formula is going to be little m d over big M plus little m. So we put in all the numbers and we do that in the text for you. So you can refer to the, uh, the text here where we, we put in all, all those numbers. And we then work it out. And what I did is I, I put them all to 10 to the 22s is what I did, the 22nd power. And then when I worked that out, I got for the center of mass, which you can check in the notes, all the details, is 4,670 kilometers. And since the radius of the Earth is something like 6,370 kilometers, the center of mass is actually inside, inside the Earth. You can think of you can think of the center of mass as the balance point. Where would you put here like a, like a fulcrum to like balance the two? 